Let's take a look at evaluating an indefinite integral based on the power rule. Recall the power rule down here. When we have x to a power we and we want to anti-differentiate or evaluate the indefinite integral, note that we need to add 1 to the existing power and then divide by that new power. In this case, it may not look like the power rule is the appropriate technique to use here. However, let's go ahead and rewrite these expressions with exponents. Note that the 5x to the f over x to the fourth can be written as 5 times x to the negative fourth power and that 1 over the cube root of x squared can be written as x to the negative 2 thirds power. Now recall that if you have the nth root of x to the n power, that you can rewrite that as an exponent. It would be x to the power, so n, over the root, or m. And since this cube root of x squared is in the denominator, we of course need a negative exponent, dx. Then let's go ahead and use the linearity of the integral to separate this into two separate integrals, and let's go ahead and pull out this coefficient of 5. So we would have 5 times the integral of x to the negative fourth dx plus the integral of x to the negative two thirds dx. Now let's go ahead and find the antiderivative for both of these. Starting with the first one on the left, we have five times now my current exponent is negative 4. I'm going to add 1 to get a new exponent. And negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So I need to multiply this by negative 1 third. Plus, doing a similar process here with my x to the negative 2 thirds, I'm going to have x to the negative 2 thirds I'm going to need to add 1, and then I'm going to multiply 1 by 1 over that new exponent. Now note that 1 can be written as 3 over 3, so negative 2 thirds plus 3 thirds is a positive 1 third. So my new denominator here, my 1 over, it's 1 over 1 third. That's my new exponent for this x. And then we'll have our constant of integration c. So let's bring this up over here. So 5 times negative 1 third is negative 5 thirds. X to the, and then my new exponent is negative 4 plus 1, so negative 3. 3 plus, now we have 1 divided by 1 third. 1 divided by 1 third is the same as 1 times 3 over 1, or 1 times 3. So my coefficient for my second term is 3, and we said that that new exponent was 1 third, so x to the 1 third power. We simplified that. And then plus our constant of integration. Lastly, let's go ahead and rewrite this without a negative exponent. So we will have negative 5 thirds, or negative 5 over 3 times x cubed, plus 3 times x to the 1 third. We can leave this power as a fraction, we don't need to write it as a radical, plus c. And this would be our antiderivative. Let's look at one more example. We have 
Evaluating the indefinite integral, we have the integral of 2x to the 4th minus 3 over x plus 5 over x to the 4th minus 4 times the square root of x dx. Let's go ahead and first use the linearity of the integral to rewrite this as a sum and difference, and let's go ahead and pull out any coefficients that are necessary so that we can focus on the anti-differentiation. So we'll end up with 2 times the integral of x to the 4th dx minus 3 times the integral of 1 over x dx plus 5 times the integral of x to the negative 4th dx minus 4 times the integral, and I'm going to rewrite the square root of x as x to the 1 half power. So x to the 1 half power dx. Now you might be wondering why I didn't write 1 over x as x to the negative 1 power. I didn't write it that way because 1 over x is an exception to using the power rule. This power rule works very well provided that n minus 1 does not equal 1. So n minus 1 cannot equal um, negative 1. Okay? We have the special derivative for the case where we're integrating 1 over x. 1 over x, the antiderivative, is natural log of x. So you may be tempted to rewrite 1 over x as x to the negative 1 power, but don't do that. Negative 1 over x is going to involve a natural log function. However, the rest of these we will have involving the power rule. So let's go ahead and integrate. So we'll have 2 times, for my first term I'll have x to the 4 plus 1 power, so that's 5, so I need to multiply by 1 fifth, minus 3 times, now remember this is 1 over x, I don't use the power rule, this, this involves a logarithm, so 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x, plus 5 times, now I've got x to the negative 4th, we need to add 1 to the exponent. Now that new exponent is negative 3, so I'm going to multiply by 1 over negative 3, plus 4 times, now we have x to the 1 half, we need to add 1, and 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. So I multiply by 1 over 3 halves. Now, 1 over 3 halves, or 1 divided by 3 halves, is the same as 1 times 2 thirds, or simply 2 thirds. So I, in the case that this exponent is a fraction, I can simply multiply by the reciprocal. So instead of writing 1 divided by 3 halves, I could simply multiply by the reciprocal of 3 halves, which is 2 thirds. And then of course we'll have our constant of integration. So let's go ahead and clean this up. We have 2 fifths times x to the fifth power minus 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 5 thirds, well actually this is going to be 5 over 3 times x cubed. Recall that this is going to be an x to the negative 3 power, so 
we will rewrite it as x cubed in the denominator. And then we have 4 times 2 thirds. 4 times 2 thirds is 8 thirds. x to the 3 halves power plus c. And there's our antiderivative. I hope you find this helpful.